Hello everyone, what an exciting week ahead of us. Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities. Uh, we've had a real roller coaster, but certainly ending spectacularly to the upside for stocks at the end of last week. Further gains built on rather stretching for the stars type rallies in stocks at the end of last week. And that all, of course, started with, uh, first of all, uh, some hope by the market. It's not a view. The market seemed to be reacting bullishly to the idea that the Republicans could uh, win back control of the House, perhaps even the Senate. Uh, and then it was compounded by that larger than expected drop in inflation back to 7.7% in the USA. Now, that's a, it's a good thing that inflation is rolling over to the, up, to the downside, but it's not the spectacular thing that perhaps the markets seem to have celebrated because 7.7% is still a catastrophic number for the US economy. It still means the Federal Reserve has to aggressively raise interest rates. Now, aggressively may decline to 50 point increases. Uh, 25 points might be a little bit too hopeful but maybe a moderation to 50 points. And I wouldn't rule out yet one more 75 point interest rate hike. The, the thinking there by the Fed could be that, well, it seems to be working. So let's do another 75 before we slow to 50. And also what was in the detail of that inflation number, and a lot of people seem to have overlooked, was that on the monthly basis, gasoline prices actually rose 4%. Now, they had been falling for the three previous months, and then suddenly there's an increase. Overall, energy fell from around 19.8% to 17.6%, but that's still energy prices 17.6% higher than they previously were, which is still a real concern for the Federal Reserve, of course. And it does mean that all this time, the and the foundations of the US economy are being eaten away by these price rises. What I've been trying to allude to for some time is that inflation is now broad based in the United States. In fact, I believe we have a wages inflation spiral already in place for several months now in the United States. We've definitely seen wages start to take off and we've seen prices continue to rise. Now, that's all bad news for the US economy, unfortunately. And yet people wanted to celebrate a 7.7% inflation number. It kind of makes you get a grip of just how bad the situation is in the USA if we think 77 is cause for celebration. Even at 6.7, even at 5.7, inflation is too high. Even at 4.7%, the Federal Reserve would be con con concerned, okay? And probably if it would just got there, be raising interest rates. They let it get away and now they're having to hike aggressively, as we said they would, far too late, causing more economic damage on top of the damage being done by the inflation itself. But we're talking here about how they will think, not how I would have managed the situation. So we had all this euphoria in the market about these events, but then... Uh, we now know the Republicans will win the lower house, that the Democrats have maintained control of the Senate. Nancy Pelosi will be looking for a new job. Uh, she's gone all quiet all of a sudden uh, as the former House rep, senior House rep. So things are changing in the United States, but they're moving towards economic or sorry, political policy paralysis as the difficulties of the US economy become ever greater. So that's not a great potent for what might lay ahead over the next two years in the US economy. I think there is worse to come, not better. And even if the Federal Reserve were to ease off interest rate hikes, which it will, of course, uh, that doesn't mean that everything's rosy all of a sudden for corporate earnings. U.S. consumer confidence on Friday was dropped sharply yet again. And do not underestimate this. 
US consumer confidence has been in the main lower than it was in the global financial crisis. And in fact, it hasn't been at these levels. It's only been at these levels in terms of US consumer depression once since the series began in the 1950s. And that was around the 1980 period where Volcker took interest rates to 20% to fight 14% inflation. So here we are now with rates ratcheting higher, could still go to 6.5, 7.5% very easily on that historic reference point. Uh, that would be very modest an outlook for Fed funds to go to 6.5, 7.5%. Uh, so the point is that interest rates are still going a lot higher in the United States. The economy is continuing to deteriorate. The US consumer is thoroughly depressed. Uh, at a catastrophically low level. Inflation is still at a catastrophically high level. Uh, so this rally in the US equity market of the past week may be numbered in mere days before the market again begins to roll over it as, as it has on previous rallies. What may be a little bit different this time is that certainly there's going to be greater enthusiasm from a lot of fund managers to begin to buy again. Remember, there's always an upward bias uh, to the market, given that by law, people have to give part of their earnings, hard work for money to superannuation fund companies, who then all they do is blindly buy stocks. So, uh, and always underperform, but we, by law, we have to give them our money, uh, unless you're doing a self-managed super fund, of course. So there's a natural bias for the market to rise, but a lot of investors who have a choice and aren't required by law to keep their money in funds are actually in a big wave of redemptions at the moment. Uh, and we've seen that with the biggest fund manager in the world, BlackRock, massive redemptions out of their funds, which have just performed terribly this year. Uh, as most conservative buy anything at any price fund managers have. So on this occasion, a lot of those people are coming back to the market to try again. Hence, we see this strong upward rally. There is also in process the idea of, and I do think this comes from a new generation of traders who grew up with uh, gaming, computer games, is that everything's binary. There's one reason that will decide everything, so act on that. So the inflation number fell more than expected, so buy stocks. But don't think about any other any of the other complexities of the US economy and how earnings uh, eventually flow through over the long run. So I think there is a little bit of that. So I think the market's got ahead of itself here. I think we could have maybe one more day, maybe two, maybe three more days of upside. Who knows? I could be wrong, and this is the bottom. I do think there is a strong stronger possibility that stocks are making a long-term low already have here than I had previously anticipated, but it isn't enough for me to personally change my view on stocks as yet. I would like to see the market rally a little bit, fall back, consolidate. If it then made a new high, I'd be tempted to go, through, go with that movement to the upside. For the moment though, I'm watching for a little bit of a roller hesitation, then start to go down again on the basis that the US consumer is very unhappy. The US faces political paralysis. Uh, their trade deficit is out of control. Their fiscal deficit is out of control. And the Republicans holding the Congress may prevent the debt ceiling being raised unless the Biden government winds back its spending, in which case you would have an economy that's already in troubled waters being further hit by still higher interest rates, still screaming inflation, and the unwinding of government spending, reduction in government spending, the economy will be negative yet again. It's only grown 0.4% in the first nine months of the year and can easily go negative again in fourth quarter, first quarter, second quarter. The idea that the US economy is not out of the woods doesn't even begin to describe it. The outlook for the US economy is dire uh, and therefore the rally in stocks may be a kind of last hurrah before that 10 to 20% further decline I've been speaking of. However, as I pointed out, the bulls have a slightly stronger argument from the price action than has previously been the case. So we will see moving forward. 
On the US dollar, remember I thought the US dollar, and I started speaking about this a week or two, or two, three weeks ago, that the US dollar was becoming a bubble. Well, it certainly had a massive down week. Is that the bubble bursting? I'm not sure, but I'm kicking myself a little bit that I haven't been more short uh, the US dollar than I have. I've certainly been long the yen. I think another, I think Asian currencies are probably going to outperform on the upside as the US dollar consolidates or continues to weaken. If you see the US dollar turn around, it could be it has further upside. The bubble could be get bigger before it bursts. So it's a little bit tricky there on the US dollar front at the moment. I do think the Australian dollar though being bought uh, a little bit too excitedly at the moment. And as with equities, I would look for the Australian dollar and Australian equities to roll over at some point during this coming week. Uh, we'll see how things unfold, but it is not a positive outlook for the US economy. It is not a really rosy outlook for Asia, but Asia will do better. And it's not a good outlook for Australia's trade with China at the moment. So let's see how things unfold, but I would suggest great caution on the US stock market rally. Thank you very much. Have a great week ahead.